All right, so going back to Haskell. Now we're doing data.map, as lists or dictionaries, if you so will. Key value pairs, I like that. Lists of key value pairs, that's what we decided was the best name. Haskell called them maps for whatever dumb reason. That's what we learned yesterday. Yeah. For instance, we might use an association list to store phone numbers. Named phone number, yeah. The most obvious way to represent it is in a list of pairs. It is indeed. Right? Odd indentation, right? No, not really odd. Right, let's make a function that looks up some value of a given key. Wait, does this really matter? Didn't, didn't they specifically say that the best way to do this is to import... Where is it? Here we go. Data map, exactly. Since it, uh, it yeah, implemented with trees. So if you want to do a dictionary, a map, a key value pair, you do want to import this. Yeah. Data dot map from list function takes an association list. Right, that's why we need to know. Yeah, yeah. We get a list of pairs. That's what from list takes. And right, that's something that I I a little bit missed out on the importance of yesterday that. That's how a uh, that's how a map look looks. Uh, if you use it the uh, from list thing, right? Hmm. If there are duplicate keys, they just get discarded. Nice map from list. Hmm. Now you can see my mouse. By the way, I fixed that makes life easier. It says that it takes a list of pairs, keys and values, exactly, and returns a map that maps from uh, from keys to values. Map dot map. Notice when we were doing association lists with normal lists, the keys only had to be equatable. Yeah. EQ type class, but now they have to be orderable. That's an essential constraint in the data map module. I remember that, yeah. Being more strict. You should always use data.map exactly for key value associations, unless you have keys that aren't part of the ORD type class. We can return an empty, uh, empty map. Yeah, they're all from list. That's an interesting way to implement it. How do we, right? Instead of doing like what, um, uh, let's zoom in a little bit, right? Instead of doing what Python does, right? And do a key value, right? Instead of just getting that this structure on our dictionary instead we get the right I wonder the key does it have to be a string I don't think it has to be you can have your key to be anything you want yeah I'm pretty sure yeah can be whatever you want. It makes sense to have the key be a string though. Yeah. Huh. <sighs> I do remember this. Yeah. Not owner says that Golang is a language designed by Rob Pike and Ken Thompson. Thompson. Do you know who they are? I know they are famous programmers. Language programmers. That's all I know. And I know we've talked about them before. They're good at what they're doing, so the name is just inconsequential. Right, but that that is not, right? 
a person did this language. That's not an argument for why the language is good. So, I suppose, as, just like if you flip that on its head, Go language is not bad or tainted just because it's named after Google. It doesn't have to be bad just because of the naming convention. It has to be evaluated on its own, I suppose. Hmm. I remember we talked about that, but I don't remember what what made you like Golang because I I feel I do remember this discussion from before. Like, what is what is good with Golang? Hmm. <clears throat> All right, insert where we yeah, yeah exactly we can. That's one of the reasons why we have um, an, uh, we can order them and we can insert wherever we want to, right? If they are ordered by strings, then they get ordered alphabetically when we do insert, which is kind of cool. Go isn't named after Google, it, name, it is named after Gopher. Oh, I didn't know that. <coughs> Didn't know that. I thought if you... Mm. Oh, shit. Golan? That's not what I meant. Golang. Statically typed. Oh. Statically typed compiled programming language designed at Google, right? It's yeah. Greismer, Pike, and Thompson. Syntactically similar to C, but with memory safety, garbage collection, and structural typing. Right, so it has the same benefits as Rust, I suppose. Isn't that what Rust is as well? Is Rust statically typed? I assume it is. Hmm. Right, Go is syntactically similar to C, but with memory safety. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yep. And with CSP style concurrency, I don't know what that is. Communicating sequential processes. Threading. I assume, yeah. Language is often referred to as Golang. It's just called Gof because it's domain name golang.org, but the proper name is Go. I just assumed it came from Google. Oh. Since Google shows up everywhere. Hmm. Static typing, uh, runtime efficiently like C, yeah. Readability and usability like Python and JavaScript. High performance networking and multiprocessing. So it's... This and Rust is probably very similar, right? If you look at uh, different languages, it would be very similar. Mm. I haven't tried Rust or Golang, so... Mm. No one says, I mean, it's just a programming language? I think just, I mean... Programmers are opinionated, right? Google has a lot of money and they hired some of the best dudes in the business and they paid them while they made this language. Yeah. It is different from Chromium stuff, right? It's not Google who maintains the language. Wait. The language, I assume, is just completely open source. It's just a programming language. I get what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. It's just a programming language. It's, it's There is no integration with Google infrastructure in Golang. That would be weird. Yeah. Rather than if... Wait. Did we play the same song again? How did that happen? Oh, I made, I made a boo-boo, didn't I? 
I'll fix that later. Place the same thing over and over again. Same song over and over again, yeah. Oops. Elrunner says, I would use Golang for writing software that communicates with the internet. Like uh, a review writing script. Nice. I would use Rust for writing uh, an alternative to grep. Oh, so uh, Golang is a little bit... Um, what did they say that? Layers of abstractions. Rust is a little bit closer to the metal, if, if you will. No? Yes? Right, where were we? Right, insert was fine. Right, we can implement our own from list. Yeah, remember that. We can check if a map is empty. We can check the size of a map. Right, pretty good. Singleton takes a key and a value and creates a map that has exactly one mapping. Why would we... Oh, right, rather than mapping from list. Lookup works like the data.list lookup, uh, only it operates on, on maps. It returns just something if it finds something for the key and nothing if it doesn't. Yep. Member it, uh, is a predicate. Wait. The predicate. Member is a predicate, takes a key and a map and reports whether the key is in map or not. Why not name that? It's similar to LM, right? Mm -hmm. What is this? Node Runner has some warm place dot ru soft sandbox JavaScript display. Warning volume. I I can't really prep for that volume. Is that something I want to open now or should I watch it later than then? Hmm. Might check it later, yeah. Map and filter work much like their list equivalents. Yeah. To list, the inverse of from list. Very nice. Keys and elements returns lists of keys and... Oh, right. Turn keys and, and elements. Values. That's... It's a bit annoying that it's called elements instead of values, since we all call them values, instead of keys and elements. Hmm. Not says it's a website that generates music, but it doesn't have a volume control. Oh, it just generates random music? I need to fix that thing. Oh, that was a bit loud, wasn't it? It's an oversight and a half. Wait, my oversight? Or, oh, the oversight on the website doesn't have any volume control. I suppose they think you can just manage your own volume. But I agree, yeah. You have... It's AI music. It actually sounds like a little bit of fun. I suppose since this song was a bit annoying anyway, let's let's try it. Cover your ears. Oh shit, I don't do I have any volume control for that? Oh, it didn't start. Uh, you know what? I I'll try that out. Uh, we'll try that out later. Actually, we're gonna do, we're gonna fix this as well. Fix my, my music thing, right? I put the, do, 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 my while loop is just at the wrong spot, isn't it? Right. 
Ooh, is bash? Do we have to do intendation? All right, done. Oh, actually, here we put sleep one. Then we take all of this and we move it over here. Maybe it'll work now. Should be working. Okay, back to it. Mm. Yeah, yeah, they just return the keys and elements if we need them. It was a little bit stressful. This is not really lo fi. This doesn't feel lo fi either. I suppose it's not supposed to be lo-fi, it's more video game music, eh? Alright, from list width is a cool little function. It, it acts like from list, only it doesn't discard duplicate keys, but it uses a function supplied to it to decide what to do with them. Let's say a girl can have several numbers, and we have an association list set up like this. Right. Yeah, Betty and Penny and Patsy, they, they will all, right, we would get a lot of discarded if we tried to do this. Now if we just use from lists, uh, put that into a map, we lose a few numbers. We do indeed. Oh, remember how we were talking about UTF-8 before? Ken Thompson and Rob Pike made that. That's kind of cool, yeah. Right, phone book to map. What we can do is from list with number one, number two, number one plus plus comma plus plus number two. Right, we do this on the entire list. Okay, so we have a function here that takes two numbers. Oh, it adds the numbers together. Yeah, exactly. So we get Patsy and we get the, all these three numbers, comma separated. I, a str comma separated string with all the numbers. Exactly. Comma and space. Right. With takes a la lambda. Well, it takes a function, but we use a lambda function because that make that's a sane way to do it, I suppose. If a duplicate key is found, the function we pass is used to combine the values of these keys into some other value. We could also uh, we could also first make all the values in the association list singleton list, and then we can use plus plus to combine the numbers. Whoops, that was one two one step too many. All right, here we go. Singing? I don't want to hear singing. That's... All right. Map them. All right, we make a list. Wait, oh, the value can be a list. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a pretty good way to do it. We do an actual list instead of a fake string list, I guess. Hmm. Nodrunner says that Go is like a better C from the guys that didn't bring you C. <laughs> nice. Nice. Pretty neat. Another use case is if we're making a map from an association list of numbers 
And when duplicate key is found, we want the biggest value for the key to be kept. All right, we keep five instead of three or a hundred. Yeah, exactly, because we take the function where it just chooses the max. Is this from... I kind of feel like I recognize this song. Does it say? I don't think so. Turtle Island. Nope. Or we could choose to add together the values from the same keys by just having plus exactly, yeah. Insert with is the same thing, yeah. It inserts a key value pair into a map, but if the map only con already contains the key, it uses a function passed to determine what to do. Yeah. These were just a few functions from the data.map. You can see a complete list of functions in the documentation. Yeah, that's the data.map. Then we have data.set, something else. The data.set modules offer us, well, sets. Actually, what I have noticed, right? These things, I'm not gonna learn uh, the modules just straight off, but usually what happens is that you, if you want to do something, when you've read this, you have a vague memory, but you end up uh, finding these imports, right? When you search for what you want to do, like, oh, I want to make a dictionary in Haskell. Then you will end up remembering data.map when you're searching for it. Yeah. Colgate Dinotap says, maths! Oh no, are we doing maths again? It's awful, isn't it? Right, the data.set modules offers us, well, sets. Like sets from mathematics. Sets are kind of like a cross between lists and maps. The cross between them? All the elements in a set are unique, okay? And because they're internally implemented with trees, just like data.map, they are ordered. Checking for membership, inserting, deleting, etc. is much faster than doing the same thing with lists. Okay, the most common operation when dealing with sets are inserting into a set. Checking for mem membership and converting a set to a list. Wait. Wait, so a list is... No, uh, a set is like a list, but they're always unique, uh, like the, um, the elements, whatever, the indexes, they, they always contain unique values, right? Because the names in data.set clash with a lot of prelude in data.list names, we do a qualified import, yeah. But this import statement, yeah, data.set as set. All right, and load it in. We don't have to do that right now. Scumbag alley. Scumbag alley. All right. Let's say we have two pieces of text. We want to find out which character were used in both of them. Okay, which characters? We just had an anime dream. Anime, reality. Are they so different? The old man left his garbage can out and now his trash is all over my lawn. Awful. Okay, so the from list function works uh, much like you would expect. It takes a list and converts it into a set. All right, we have these lists. And since we turned them into a set, they are also ordered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it fix. It doesn't take the order from here, but it takes it in... Um, uh, bigger, smaller. What's that called? Equality? Yeah, ORD. Exactly, the ORD type class, I think it's called, right? Uh, so this is the order. I actually thought that um, upper letters came after smaller letters. I don't know why, I just thought that was it, but it doesn't. Hmm. 
can we... I don't remember if we have like a sword thing. Mm, right. Hello world. No? I, I, I don't remember. I think we had some kind of thing. Maybe, oh, maybe it doesn't work on list of characters. I don't remember. It's fine, but this is this is one way of doing this. Yeah, and no duplicates. And since we have, and these are also called from list. That becomes confusing. Because is it a map or is it a set? Well, of course it is a it's a set because it's. The structure is not that of a map, it's... There are no key value pairs here, it's just a set. Uh. As you can see, the items are ordered and each element is unique. Now let's use the intersection function to see which elements they both share. That intersection, boom, and then we get a list of all the stuff that they share, and then we get the difference, the things that they don't share. Nice, we can see all the unique letters. Wait. Used in both sentences by union. Oh, right, 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 all of them. Yep, yep. Null, size, member, empty, singleton, insert, delete. Work exactly like you'd expect them to. Yeah, we're just doing the same thing again. Hmm. Note owner says, Go is an awesome line in quotes. Go is an awesome language, and as this talk illustrates, we aren't competing with Go. Go and Ru wait. Go and Rust have totally different goals. Ah, and Rob Pike's languages were quite the influence on Rust. PC Walton of the Rust Mozilla team. There we go. They have different goals. So my first guess was off. We can also check for subsets, uh, or proper subsets. Set A is a subset of uh, of set B if B contains all the elements that A does. Set A is a proper subset of B if B contains all the elements that A does, but has more elements. Shit, I got confused. Alright, so subset true because it has two three four subset of wait is subset of set from list one two three four five all right since they're both oh it's not a proper subset because it's they are the same it's not really a subset i mean it is a subset but it's it's just the same set So much stress. We can also map uh, over sets and filter them. Yeah, yeah, because the sets, they work just like lists from the user side of things. Wait, why did we want to use sets again? It was faster for everything or just some things? Right, because they're all they are all unique values. That's the that's the difference, the unique values. Sets are often used to weed a list of duplicates from a list by first making it into a set with from list and then converting it back with to a list with to list. Why do we do that? The data.list function nub already does that. Yeah, but weeding out duplicates for larger lists is much faster if you cram them into a set and then convert them back to a list than using nub. Okay, okay. But using but using nub only requires the type of the list element to be part of the EQ type class. Whereas if you want to cram the elements into a set, the, the type of the list has to be in ORD. 
Hey, what's crack a lacking? All right, a nub. So this is more efficient, which is interesting because it feels like we're doing two things here. But this is more. Yeah, that's it's more uh, more efficient, eh? I would have guessed that this is more efficient because the only thing we do is take stuff away, but. It's what happens in the background that matters. Yeah, set nub is generally faster than nub on big lists, but as you can see, nub preserves the ordering of the element lists elements, while set nub does not. Alright, making our own modules. That's an interesting thing. Hmm. We've looked at some cool modules so far, but how do we make our own module? I think I'm I'm gonna pause here and do check into modules tomorrow when I'm not as tired and gotten proper sleep. Ah, indeed. <laughs> 